A very warm welcome to our school. I am standing in the entrance hall of the Catholic Primary School of St. Mary and St. Benedict. This is a Benedictine parish. It's the parish of St. Mary, and it's run by the Benedictine monks from Amberforth Abbey, to which I belong. The parish has already celebrated its bicentenary, <clears throat> and the school itself and the building are over a hundred years old. The uh, children here number over 400, which is quite a big school, and that gives us plenty of opportunity to sort out the canaries from the jackdaws and form a choir. They are waiting, or 80 of them, are now waiting in the hall and they are going to take us through the Passion of Jesus in 14 stages, starting with the agony in the garden and ending with the resurrection. <clears throat> now, this program is going out live, and as you'll appreciate, with young children from 8 to 11, almost anything can happen. It was a few years ago in my parish of Garforth, <clears throat> that I had to conduct the Stations of the Cross one Good Friday morning, and a lot of ministers and dignitaries came along for that occasion. It was an ecumenical Stations of the Cross. And I invited a few children to come and join us so that I could ask them questions. When we got to the station where Simon of Cyrene takes the cross, I said to the children, can you tell me the name of the man who had to help Jesus? Please, Father, his name was Jack, came out. Well, so it might have been. And only a week or two ago, when we were having some of the stations for the little ones after school, they used to come along, and we used to do about six or seven of them. And when he got to the one where uh, Jesus died on the cross, I said, can anybody tell me how long it was that Jesus hung on the cross before he died? The answer, please, Father, for 40 days and 40 nights. Well, I hope the Lancashire accent will give you something of the flavour of those first men from Galilee. Now, the children are very anxious to start, so we're going to join them now in the hall, and they're going to start by singing Jesus Good Above All Other.
In a very few moments, I am going to hand you over entirely to the children who are going to conduct you on a pilgrimage through 14 stages of the Passion of Jesus. But before we actually start, I need to explain just what we're going to try and do. The traditional 14 stations of the cross start with Jesus being condemned to death and finish with him being taken down from the cross. We are going to start with the agony in the garden and go through the crowning with thorns and the scourging and finish up with the uh, resurrection at the end. We're going to base our stages on scripture and also on information which has come from the Holy Shroud of Turin. From the very earliest Christian times, it was always known that somewhere in the world there was a miraculous picture of Jesus surrounded with numerous legends. And all these legends point back to the existence of the Shroud, which is now kept in the Cathedral of Turin in Italy. Now, the image on the Shroud is faint. It shows a whole body, both front and back. It's the kind of image one might expect if a length of cloth were laid onto a bronze recumbent figure, then double back underneath it, and then if the bronze were heated, it would eventually singe the cloth, but in doing so would produce a negative of the figure. That is what the shroud is like. In addition, there are some blood stains on it. Now, obviously being a negative, it was only when photography was invented that accidentally it was discovered what the true image of the shroud really looked like because of the reversal. Both the evidence of the shroud and the historical work that followed its publication, it's generally agreed that criminals were chained to the crossbar, stretched out like this. The upright was already in position, and then the crossbar was lifted onto it. That's how we're going to do it today. I think it's reasonable to ask, why try and follow in detail the terrible events of our Lord's passion and death? Isn't it something a little bit morbid? Well, I think there are two excellent reasons for it. But the first reason is that it brings us slap up against the tremendous mystery of God's love for us. He's made us in his own image, and that image comes out most clearly in our gift of free will, given us to choose good and reject evil. Now, when we follow the passion, we enter deeply into the mystery of God's love for us. And somehow, the further one goes into the mystery, the more wonderful it becomes and the more mysterious. The second reason, I think, is more difficult to explain. In some extraordinary way, we are invited to share in the passion of Christ. And St. Paul gives us two very good hints about this. In his letter to the Philippians, he writes, All I want is to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and to share his sufferings by reproducing the pattern of his death. That is the way I can hope to take my place in the resurrection of the dead to share his sufferings by reproducing the pattern of his death. In the letter to the Colossians, he writes, it makes me happy to be suffering for you now and in my body to make up all the hardships that still have to be undergone by Christ 
for the sake of his body, the church, of which I was made a servant, to make up in my body all the hardships that still have to be undergone by Christ for the sake of his body, the church. St. Paul suggests, in fact, that we, having been redeemed by the one eternal sacrifice of Christ, are invited to join in the passion of Jesus. We are the pilgrim church, the body of Christ on earth. St. Paul even says we are the bride of Christ. And we are invited to join in his sufferings and to share in the work of redemption and the conversion of sinners. It's with these thoughts in mind that I'm now going to hand you over to the children. They're going to take you through 14 stages of the Passion with words, tableaus, singing, and their own lovely pictures. This will enable us all to share in the loving obedience to the Father so wonderfully achieved in the Passion of Jesus. Now I get past the first tableau to come onto stage. So if you'll follow me, we'll start off at once. stage, the agony in the garden. After the Last Supper, Jesus went to the garden of Gethsemane to pray with his disciples, but they all fell asleep. Jesus knew from the prophets what terrible sufferings he was to undergo the next day, and he also had to take the blame for all the sins of the world and say sorry to his father. The mental agony caused him to sweat blood, yet he could say, Father, thy will be done. Let us pray. Father, we often blame others for something wrong that we have done. Help us to be truthful and not to lie our way out of trouble. Sometimes, like you, we may have to take the blame for something we have not done. May we be obedient to our Father and never doubt his love for us. Thank you. 
scourging at the pillar. Jesus had been arrested, condemned, and then ill-treated by the high priest and his council. They then brought Jesus to Pilate, who wanted to set him free. But Pilate was too frightened of what the mob might do if he let Jesus go. So he had Jesus scourged before giving in to the demands of the Jewish priests. Let us pray. <clears throat> Jesus, you were taken away to be the victim and cruel sport of the Roman soldiers. When we gang up to bully others and taunt them, then we are joining those who caused you so much suffering. May we never forget that what we do to others, we are doing to you. Scourging, the soldiers mocked Jesus for admitting that he was a king, though not of this world. They put a purple cloak on him and pressed a crown of thorns onto his head. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, our king and our brother, the only crown you wore on earth was the crown of thorns. May we your royal brothers and sisters, and therefore princes and princesses, always remember that we too will have to suffer from time to time before we arrive home. But these are the times that you come closest to us.
stage, Jesus was condemned to death. Pilate, a very frightened human judge, tried to wash his hands of any responsibility and surrendered Jesus to the Jews. The reason given by the priest to have Jesus crucified was that he had claimed to be a king. The real reason for their malice was that they were consumed with jealousy and so refused to accept Jesus as the Messiah. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, sometimes we all feel the pangs of jealousy, for we, like Pilate, are weak. Help us not to brood or act on them, for then we would be joining those who condemned you to death. of Jesus and he set out along the short journey to Calvary outside the city walls. Urged on by the priests in their moment of triumph, the crowd delighted in hurling abuse and humiliating him as much as they could. The soldiers dragged him along to his terrible fate. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, the prophets foretold how you would be humiliated and rejected by men in order that we might have our sins forgiven and be saved from final death. Kill that spirit of pride within us, the spirit which makes us criticise others while resenting any criticism of ourselves. For that is the way we try to cover up our own defects.
Jesus fell to the ground under the weight of the cross. Jesus was utterly exhausted after his night in the hands of the council, followed by the scourging and cruel mockery of the Roman soldiers. He fell to the ground with his arms still roped to the cross. The soldiers dragged him to his feet to the delight of the mob. Let us pray. Jesus, you said that if we are to follow in your footsteps, we must take up our own cross every day. Help us to accept the trials of daily life and to offer them in loving obedience to our Father without any feeling of resentment. Mother Mary. Mary alone understood the meaning of what the prophets and the Psalms foretold about the suffering servant. Now she saw these prophecies fulfilled in terrifying detail and felt the sword that Simeon said would pierce her heart. Yet she also knew that God's will must be done and so she could offer her son up to the Father. Let us pray. Holy Mary, Mother of us all, you shared with Jesus in offering his loving obedience to the Father. Help us to offer him to now in the glory of heaven and through him to offer ourselves. Then shall the Father's will be done on earth as it is in heaven.
The eighth stage, Simon of Cyrene, was forced to help Jesus carry the cross. Fearing that Jesus would die before reaching Calvary, the soldiers forced Simon, a foreigner from Cyrene, to carry the cross of Jesus. This was an insult that no Jew was willing to accept, and yet Simon, in time, would come to realise what a wonderful privilege he had been given. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, help us to understand that we too can help you to carry your cross by helping one another in countless little ways. For you said that anything done for the least of the brethren is done for you. crowd wept at the sight of Jesus. Jesus told them not to weep for him, but for themselves and their children. For it was the people of Jerusalem who had brought the coming disaster on themselves. Jesus quoted the psalm which foretold the destruction that would follow their rejection of him. Let us pray. Jesus, as we share with those eyewitnesses the horror of what you underwent when you took upon yourself the burden of our sins, remind us to pray often and to offer little sacrifices for the conversion of us poor sinners. We too must weep for those for whom you have suffered in vain.
Commons. <coughs> Having arrived at Calvary, outside the city walls, Jesus was stripped of the last thing on earth he could call his own. The seamless garment restored to him after the scourging in the court of the Antonia Fort. The soldiers fulfilled the prophecy in the psalm by casting lots for the garment rather than dividing it up between them. Let us pray. Jesus, we started Lent on Ash Wednesday by listening to Job who said, Naked I came into this world and naked I will leave it. Help us to strive, not for wealth and power and fame, but rather to do your will and to be content with what you provide for us. Then we will be able to use our energies more in seeking you and caring for the needs of others. stage Jesus was nailed to the cross Jesus was laid on his back and nailed to the beam he had carried alone for part of the journey the beam with its central mortise was then lifted onto the upright already in position on the hill his feet were secured with another huge nail this prevented early death from cramp and the agony was prolonged indefinitely. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, at this climax of your physical suffering, when the whole tidal wave of hatred and evil was hurled against you by the fury of Satan, you were able to murmur, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Help us to forgive those who offend us and hurt our pride, so that we too may have our sins forgiven.
died on the cross. Jesus hung on the cross three hours in the agony of cramp that crucifixion was intended to cause. In the midst of ridicule and abuse, he pardoned the good thief, gave his mother, Mary, into the care of St. John. He surrendered his life in a dark oblivion of faith, no longer aware of the presence of his father. Let us pray. Jesus, in those last terrible moments, you cried out from the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In that final prayer, you showed us that you were willing to give up even your awareness of your Father's love for you. Strengthen our own faith so that we too can persevere in prayer without relying on what we may feel. and laid in his mother's arms. The passion of Jesus was over. This was the hour of dark despair for his disciples. They failed to realize what had to happen despite all the prophecies and warnings that Jesus himself had given them. Only Mary, his mother, in the midst of her sorrow could cling to her faith that he really would rise again. She alone was the faithful church on earth. For this, all Saturdays are dedicated to her honour. Let us pray. We pray to Mary, our mother. Please share with us the faith you kept alive in those darkest days of your life. We need your faith in times of tragedy, when we lose someone very dear to us. Without that faith, we are tempted to doubt God's love for us, and then we give way to bitterness. So let us say together, 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus was buried in a hurry because sunset marked the start of the Sabbath day. The women took refuge in the work of preparing for the ritual washing and embalming that would be done according to custom when the Sabbath was over. The whole of creation stood in awe as it awaited the glorious moment of the resurrection. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are our King and our brother. We are your Easter people who live in the light of the resurrection. Live close within us and make the Father known to us. Then you can bring the Father and the Holy Spirit to abide in us and guide us safely home to heaven. So, the children have guided us along the journey of the last days and hours of Jesus' life. We have shared his agony and his burial, and have now come to the point of his glorious resurrection. Tomorrow is Holy Saturday, and a very special day in the year. We live in the faith that Jesus really did rise from the dead. The Easter Vigil tomorrow is the hub round which the whole liturgical year revolves. Tomorrow, the waters of baptism which brought us into God's royal family are blessed. Waters which will wash away the cinders of Ash Wednesday. Tomorrow, the new fire is blessed and will light the Paschal candle, the symbol of the risen Christ. Tomorrow is a day when we should all try to spend some time alone and in silence so as to give the Holy Spirit an opportunity to breathe his love into the depths of our hearts. Breathe new life, for he alone can reveal the Father's love for us and how much Jesus longs to share every moment of our lives. Now, as Jesus was nailed to the cross, as we've heard, he asked the Father to forgive those who were doing it, and he even made excuses for them. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We, too, now ask the Father to forgive us, and to give us the special grace to quickly forgive those who offend us. 
So shall we all say the Lord's Prayer together? Our Father, who art in heaven, Jesus was condemned to death by Pilate as the whole human race gave vent to its ultimate blasphemy. We have no king but Caesar. So we are going to conclude now this service by hailing the risen Christ as king of the universe as we all sing together, Jesus is our king.